So the play field's been cleared. It's been sanded. But now I need to start doing any kind of touch-ups that I'm going to do. So what I plan to do is mask off all of these uh, switch slots right here because they look pretty bad. So I'm going to be masking off all of these and my shooting uh, shooting lane over here. And this one up here. And this one up here. And I'm going to be repainting them. And I'm going to try to do the best I can to keep it a wood tone. And uh, we're going to see what we come up with. I'm going to have to do a little bit of mixing. It's going to be very difficult to match the current color that's over here. But we're going to give it a shot just to give it at least a nice good wood tone. This is going to be the only area of the play field where a lot of bare wood is going to be showing in comparison to... This area is going to be underneath plastics and rubbers. You're not going to really get a good visual on it. And the same goes, oh yeah, I need to mask off around here and do this as well. But uh, yeah, with all these going to be masked off and uh, we're going to do a repaint on them. Now, a method that I can use also is just literally cutting out a small segment of this brisket and covering up and then all that kind of stuff and junk, but I'm actually just going to use one giant piece to cover the entire play field that does two things. That masks anything that I do not want to get paint on, and it also gives me the ability to see the entire play field and cut where I need to cut. So, and I've got a whole roll of this. I've had this for years now. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm not too I'm not scared of using a whole bunch of it. So we're just going to cover the entire play field with this frisket. Now I'm not worried about air bubbles or anything like that. The point of this stuff is just to make sure I don't paint anything that's not supposed to be painted. Now I don't have to worry greatly about digging too deep obviously I don't want to go into like real deep into the wood but uh, I need to make sure I cut deep enough to where I'm cutting out the frisket so since I'm gonna be painting my shooter lane let me start right here and the amount of pressure I've got going down is almost just like the weight of my arm in Controlling where I want this blade to go is merely like controlling just a little twist is all it takes. And that is the shooter lane. Alright, and I just gotta rinse and repeat all of that around all of these. four and my shooter lane done. Oh my god, this is going to suck. Alright guys, we are ready to start airbrushing on the white, which is going to be our base coat. When you're airbrushing, you want your first coat to be opaque white because that will allow the other colors on top to be their true colors about any other bleeding through of the natural wood or anything like that. So, I use Createx. It's available at your Hobby Lobby or online like Amazon or anything like that. I The areas I have cut out and will be coloring are up here, here, the target areas right here and here, 
the all of the slotted switches right here where you can adjust the difficulty on these two ends right here and the entire slingshot areas and all of these right here and the shooter lane. Those are the areas that are most prominently visible when everything is assembled. I could do all of these, but they're going to be very negligible and hardly able to be even seen. So I'm not going to worry about going through all of that. All right, here we go. Hope I got enough air to do all of this. We're going to find out. that I did not get. I've got it now, so that's all covered. I've gone over the uh, painted areas with the heat gun, and I have mixed me up too much, but I have mixed up what I believe will be a good color, but we're going to find out. That is the last bit of transparent brown I've got, so we are about to find out if this was good or bad. with the coloring on this it does not look good I ran out of my color so I tried another method was not happy with it so I am going through and gonna be removing said colors it's gonna be a daunting task but it's got to be done if I want this to actually look good and I don't want to pile on layers and layers of paint because then I'll have to put down a thicker coat of clear and I definitely don't want to have to do that. I'm glad I didn't do everything just these uh, portions so it's gonna make it a little bit better. I'm using lacquer thinner to remove this paint. This would have been a lot easier if I would have removed it when I first didn't like it last night but no, I'll let it sit overnight. So it's had a little bit more time to dry, but that's not too bad. It's also another good reason why you don't want to apply any touch-up paints until after you've clear coated. Otherwise, these paints would have absorbed into the wood and I would not be able to clean it off like I am right now. All right, so you've pretty much seen what I'm going to have to do for the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video right here Ugh! so I can put something on the TV for me to watch. All right, back to square one. I've cleared off all the paint off of everything that I painted the day before. And we're going to lay down our base coat once again with white. All right, you've seen it before, so we're going to do it again. All right, I am 100% more satisfied with this color that I've got going on now. That is much, much better. Um, I just got finished doing a real quick little just go over with the heat gun to kind of dry it a little bit. And 
I may go over it one more time with a coat, but I may not. I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait a little bit and see what we get from it. All right, I'm much more pleased with the color and everything on here. I'm now gonna be using a light transparent brown to uh, go over the shooter lane to give that a little bit more of a uh, realistic look. That's what we look like now. Obviously, this is all my test areas. This is from Frisket, so this is not going to be on the play field. So remember that. But uh, I like this color so much more. It's going to look so much better. But uh, there we go. All right, and we're going to put a little heat gun to it, get it all nice and dry. All right, I think we're ready to remove the frisket now, guys. We're going to see how we did. We'll start from up here on the top area. On this particular switch slot. So far, we're looking pretty good. That slot looks a hell of a lot better than what it did. That's for damn sure. And it'll look even better once it gets clear coated. All right, so let us continue here. Looks good. Let's give you guys a pan over here. Now, as you can tell, there's still some shiny spots that are kind of low. I'm a little disappointed in my sanding right here, guys. So I'm going to have to go over this by hand to get these uh, low spots right here before I go putting the other coat on. I knew I wasn't going to be able to clear again today anyways because uh, it rained a whole bunch and the humidity is a little too high. That looks a lot better. Very pleased. All right, I've got the black touched up. We've got this small section in this teal color right here in the corner. And I was going to do my best on color matching and just filling that one little spot in. Uh, I'm wretched when it comes to color matching. I, I, it depends. If it's a solid color, then I can do it. But if it's some special off-tone like this teal or a gray, then it is horrible to try to match this. This, is, this has got like a just the right amount of blue and maybe even a touch of green in there. And it's just no fun to try to match these things a lot of the times. So I've got a couple of options that I could do here. I could mask off and paint all new blue on these triangles. 
This is, this is called the Mentos, okay? I'm calling it the Mentos version because if you can't match at least one segment, then redo all of it so it all looks the same. I don't know if you guys remember the Mentos commercials or not where this guy sat on a park bench and he put straps on just the bottom portion so he popped a Mentos and he got the right idea to make the rest of his suit all striped to match so therefore it just looked like that's the way it's supposed to be. So what I'm actually going to do is mask off and I'm going to cut out a little segment in this corner here, the, here and right here and do a white and it's going to give them all a certain little segment of white right there. It's going to make it look like it's legitimately, that's the way it's supposed to look. Uh, there's been certain plenty of games, even on Williams, where they do like a little white segment on certain inserts just to give them what, like, like they're shining or something like that kind of look. But um, a lot of games will do certain things like that. Just a little small segment of white to make it stand out a little bit better. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to frisk it over these, cut out a small little section in the same area on all three of these, shoot it with some white, and then it should blend in. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, so I've got everything masked off. This right here is from me making sure that my nozzle is clear of any uh, black color from the previous. And so now we should be able to just... See if our Mentos worked out. Mentos, the fresh maker. <laughs> now, whenever the clear goes down, guys, this is going to look even better. So, you can see where the paint's outlining on certain things, but once the clear goes down, It'll all be nice and shiny and blend in. Damn, that came out pretty good. Yep.